We are here to debate aid to the people of Ukraine defending themselves against a massive invasion by Vladimir Putin and his army. Then the minority puts up the distinguished general lady from Georgia who does not mention Ukraine once. She does not mention the thousands of Ukrainian civilians who've been slaughtered by Putin's army. She does not mention more than 100 Ukrainian children who've been shot and killed by the Ukrainian army. Instead, she talks about a massive invasion at the border, a massive invasion which their own speakers have said today hundreds of thousands of people have been apprehended in. That's very different from a military invasion. The one in Ukraine, of course, the general lady is not going to talk about that. She had a lot to say the other day when she heckled me continuously. When I came to the floor, it was like the Rocky Horror Picture Show in here with her chanting about the Russia hoax and Russia this and Russia that. Now she had the opportunity to tell the world what her views about Russia are. I put them out there, exactly what she has said. She said that the aid that the taxpayers of America are sending to the people of Ukraine to defend themselves against Vladimir Putin and the Russian army falls into the hands of Nazis. I want to see her proof. Where's her evidence? She talks about NATO Nazis. Does the minority believe that our allies in NATO who are trying to defend the people of Ukraine are Nazis? Has it come to this? General Lady talked about a massive invasion. We had a massive invasion of our own chamber. And she continued to be a cheerleader for the insurrection and deny what happened here. Mr. Speaker, I'd like those words to be taken down. Not for nothing, but when Jamie Raskin stands up to refute you on the House floor, it's pretty much game over. The House just voted on a bill expanding the President's authority to arm Ukraine by lending or leasing military equipment, a measure that had previously passed the Senate, and in the time shortly after this clip, ultimately did pass the House 417 to 10. The 10 no votes were all Republicans and included Matt Gates, Paul Gosar, Andy Biggs, and of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And yet, while this bill clearly concerned Ukraine, it should come exactly as no surprise that Marjorie Taylor Greene took the opportunity to pivot instead to talking about the southern border. Because this is what it looks like when someone's entire political career is predicated on desperately trying to score a Fox cable hit that night. Now, the reason for Greene's deflection is obvious. She's on the wrong side of this issue. She's part of the faction of Republicans who are pro-Putin. And yet, because Putin polls in the single digits in this country, Greene can't come out expressly in favor of the guy. And so while she'll still vote in favor of him every time, she needs some theatrics to distract from her wholly unpopular allegiance. And so she just throws out the tried and true fear mongering about the southern border. The same tired playbook for years and years and years, still deployed by the GOP on a daily basis because they are banking on their supporters being too stupid to know the difference. And as Jamie Raskin mentioned, it's especially funny that Marjorie Taylor Greene is so resistant to talking about Russia when it's actually Russia that's being debated, that all she can do is desperately pivot to the southern border. Three weeks ago, when Jamie Raskin was speaking on the floor in favor of holding two of Trump's allies in contempt of Congress for ignoring subpoenas regarding January 6th, Marjorie Taylor Greene stood up and heckled him by yelling about Russia collusion. And yet now, when the issue actually is Russia, suddenly Green doesn't feel like talking about that. When she's actually given the opportunity to defend her baseless talking points, well, now she wants to talk about the border. Convenient, huh? Consider too, it was Marjorie Taylor Greene who came out and said, quote, it's shocking to me that Congress is so willing to funnel $14 billion in military equipment over and over again into Ukraine, and you have to ask, is this money and is the United States military equipment falling into the hands of Nazis in Ukraine? And yet if you think those talking points sound familiar, that's because they are. Vladimir Putin himself justified this invasion of Ukraine, of a sovereign country, by claiming that he was denazifying Ukraine. Of course, that was complete bullshit and made even more ridiculous when Russian soldiers then went on to commit genocidal atrocities in Ukraine that can only be likened to the Nazis. That's who Marjorie Taylor Greene is defending. That is what Marjorie Taylor Greene is defending. By spouting the same exact talking points as Putin, she is doing the bidding of a totalitarian dictator currently overseeing the slaughter of thousands thousands of innocent civilians because pro-life or something. And look, if Marjorie Taylor Greene has proof, 
then show it. That's obviously something we'd all like to know, right? Like, I don't think anybody wants to fund the atrocities of Nazis. I'm Jewish, I certainly wouldn't. Jamie Raskin's Jewish, he certainly wouldn't. And it doesn't take you being Jewish to recognize the depravity of Nazis. So if Marjorie Taylor Greene has some information, which she must, because otherwise, why would she say it? Then you'd imagine that she would wanna share it. And yet the fact that she doesn't is yet more proof that she doesn't have a clue what she's talking about. She just spouts whatever words she thinks might land her on Fox that night. So if you find yourself defending Marjorie Taylor Greene, just know that you are defending Vladimir Putin. You are defending the invasion and slaughter of thousands of innocent Ukrainians. You are defending the bombing of hospitals and schools. If your only response to the US's efforts to arm Ukraine amid this invasion by Russia is to spout the same exact talking points as Putin, then you've made it abundantly clear where you stand. And if that's Marjorie Taylor Greene's position, she should at least have the spine to defend it. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.